My next theorem says that let's suppose we have two points B and F that lie on opposite sides of a line L. And A and G are going to be any two distinct points on that line with AG less than alpha. Then the segment between G and B and the ray from A to F are disjoint sets. We know that B and F are on opposite sides of our line, so I'm going to let B be an H1 and F be an H2. By my previous theorems, I know that all of the interior points of segment GB must lie in H1, and all the interior points of AF lie in H2. So this is the two theorems that I just did. One was specifically for segments, and one was specifically for rays. So this only leaves our boundary points G, B, and AC, where AC is equal to alpha, the actual end of that ray. By our hypotheses, I know that G is not equal to A or C. So C is defined as the point such that AC is equal to alpha. It's the polar opposite of A. Since I specifically said the distance between A and G was less than alpha, G cannot be that polar opposite. So I know G is not equal to A or C. I also know that B is not equal to A, since A is on the line and B is specifically in one of the half planes. So the only logical possibility is that B is equal to C. The end of this line segment is actually the same as the polar opposite of A. So let's suppose that's true. So now we want to see if we can get a contradiction. We're going to define M to be the line through AF. So it's the line that defines our ray AF. And just a reminder, F is in H2. And the fact that F is in H2 tells us that M is not equal to L. So these are two different lines. However, since AC is equal to alpha, C is that polar opposite, we know that C is on the ray AF, which is a subset of that line. So that tells us that we have the betweenness relation AFC. Since I am assuming that C is equal to B, that means I also have the betweenness relation AFB. Since A is on the line and B is in H1, every point between A and B must also lie in H1. So F must lie in H1 which is a contradiction, since we know that F lies in H2. So therefore, what we assumed is wrong. B is not equal to C. So therefore, we have our proof that the segment and the ray are disjoint. They do never meet. My next theorem states that two points A and B, not on a line L, lie on the same side if and only if there is no point X on that line, such that A, X, B. And while I won't prove this one, I highly encourage you to try it. Use the theorems that I've defined so far and see if you can actually prove this. And remember, it is an if and only if, so you do need to prove both directions. Two points, not on the line, but on the same side. Then there is no point x such that ax equal to b. And conversely, if there's no point x such that ax ax b, then these points must lie on the same side of the line. My final consequence is known as the postulate of Posh. It says if I have any three points A, B, C, they can be collinear or not. And I know that I have the betweenness relation A, D, B for some other point D. Then any line L passing through my point D but not passing through A, B, or C must either pass through a point E such that I have the betweenness A, E, C or through a point F, such that I have the betweenness B, F, C. In addition, these are mutually exclusive. Only one of these can happen at a time. I can't have both of them. So let's prove this. We're going to let A be an H1, the half plane determined by this line L passing through D. Then since I have the betweenness relation A, D, B, and I know this line doesn't pass through either A or B, then I know that B must be on the other side of the line. So B is in H2. 
We then also know that C has to lie in either one of these. It must lie in H1 or in H2, but not both. Let's suppose C is in H2. Then A and C are on opposite sides. A is in H1 and C is in H2. Then by our last theorem, there must exist a point E on that line such that A, E, C. So E is between A and C. We can do something similar to show that if C is in H1, then we have that point F such that B, F, C. I now want to show they're mutually exclusive. So if my line L also passes through a point F such that B, F, C, then since my last theorem was an if and only if, I know that C has to be on the opposite side of B, so I need C to be in H1, which is a contradiction. I did assume that C was in H2, but if you assume C is in H1, you can get a very, very similar argument to this. So therefore we have to have that one of these two conditions hold and they are mutually exclusive. Only one of them holds.